We all know at the end of this month, we will see one of the best promos added to FIFA 22, this being Team of the Year. We have already spoken about this subject already on this channel. Back in November, I released a video sharing that I'm starting my grind. All the packs that I've been able to get from division rivals, foot champions, squad battles and squad builder challenges have all been just stored to my club. I have not opened them, haven't even touched them just because I'm saving them for team of the year. Once team of the year is finally released, that's when I'll open them all in hopes that I could get a team of the year player. Now my grind started extremely early. This was back at the beginning of November and at the time FIFA 22 was only out for about one month. Well now we're less than one month away from team of the year, so this is your last chance to prepare. Before I do get into the video though, if you're looking to skip the preparation and just get to the points in where you have coins into your account and you're ready for team gear to either buy the latest players or just go and use those to open as many packs as you want, then there is no better place than Mule Factory. Head over there to get yourself some cheap fast FIFA 22 coins completely rival and if you use Fnatic 5 at checkout, you'll also get yourself a 5% discount. Link can be found in the description down below. And getting back into the video. Team of the Year is by far one of the biggest events that we get every single year for every single FIFA. The players that get selected to be part of this team will have insanely boosted card stats. We're not just talking about being similar to the Team of the Week, where they get increased by one or two ratings, with certain individual stats also being boosted. No, with Team of the Year, they get boosted by over ratings of 5 even more to take them up to high rated 98 or 99 rated players. For those that start off having a relatively lower rated card, they still get into those mid 90s. And with these types of players along with it comes an insane price tag. In previous years, these types of players have cost millions of coins, and with that price tag connected to it, it always makes sense for me to actually prepare. So this is what I will be doing this month. Firstly, I'm going to continue on saving my packs. Already we have gone through November and December where I've saved an odd few packs here and there. I don't spend as much time as what I would like playing FIFA 22, but I still play every now and then, especially over on the weekends where we do go through live streams and then we do spend time going through division rivals and foot champions. The rewards that we get from those game modes get added to my club, I open those that don't really matter. We're talking about those that have no benefit for me to actually save them. These are the red player picks and also any types of team of the week packs. I could save them if I really want to, but by the time team of the year does come out, it really doesn't make any difference. Team of the year players don't get added to your player picks and they don't count as team of the week players. So there's no way that I can actually get them within those packs. So I open those packs and then save everything else. Every type of gold pack that I get, no matter how good it is, whether or not it's just a cheap 5k pack or it's something more expensive, it just gets stored to my club. I don't touch it, don't look at it. And I will be waiting until team of the year is released in which we will be doing a pack opening. A pack opening which will include all 200 to 300 of those packs which hopefully I'll be able to save at the time and then we'll just open every single one of them in hopes that we will get a team of the year player. I should highlight that there is still no guarantee that I will be getting one of these players. It's still based on a chance and even though I've saved 140 packs as of right now looking to get anywhere between 200 to 300 it doesn't mean that I'm going to be getting anyone but these are all free packs which I can use for the promo event. And I don't need to go and stock up on FIFA points to open the exact same amount. The second thing worth doing is starting to think whether or not you should be selling your team. And this is because a market crash will come. Already the FIFA 22 market has just had a rapid decline since the release and this is what normally happens but with FIFA 22 it's lower compared to any other year. Already we're looking at Messi and Ronaldo having prices which are similar to what we had at team of the season last year with FIFA 21. And these players will continue to go down. With team of the year, this is where we see a massive decline. Remember, I have saved 140 packs already and there's a lot of people doing the exact same thing. But there's also people that have saved 20 times as many packs as me. There's people out there with thousands of packs already stored to their club. As already mentioned, there's no guarantee that they're going to be getting team of the year players, but it is guaranteed that they're going to be getting a lot of gold players. A lot of those gold players are likely to be different types of walkouts. 
And because no one's actually interested in those walkouts anymore, as they want those team of the year players, those players will instantly get listed onto the market and whatever is the cheapest will immediately be undercut. Because so many people are going through this all at the exact same time, it just leads to an overall market crash of some of the high rated players that still have some value as of right now. We also have to remember that people will also be using FIFA points. This is normally one of the biggest events that we have every single year where people stock up on as many FIFA points as possible and just go through them all within just a couple days. If they also get any types of gold players that have any type of value, those will get listed on the market, forcing them to undercut whatever the cheapest is, which then means the market goes down. And we also have those that have experienced this before with previous FIFAs. They may or may not have any packs available, but at this current moment, they're deciding whether or not they're going to sell their team, hold off with something a lot cheaper for the next couple of weeks, and then buy back their team after the market crash. Those players actually selling off their team right now is the start to this. This is what starts to lead to players gradually going down in price, just so they can claim their coins now. And once everyone does plummet, this is when they'll buy those players back so they can have the exact same team for the fraction of the price. Remember, we did do this with the Black Friday event. It saved me probably millions of coins. And the third thing that you can do is still look at investments. Now, this might be a bit contradictory considering I just said that there is going to be a market crash. So investing may not be the best thing. But this is what I do every single year. I still look at fodder investing and special card investing. And it's not so much to get all of these players so that once team of the year is released, EA releases an SBC and all of these players shoot up in price. This time it's slightly different. Normally with team of the years, they are put in packs and you can't get the main team through SBCs. There's a chance that we could get an honorable mention team leader player, which could be an SBC or it could be an objective. This is not going to be as desirable as the main team. This is just purely because it's a big money maker for EA. Having all of these players within these packs leads to a lot of people opening packs and loading up on a load of FIFA points. The SBCs that EA does release at a time, you should expect it to be pack rewards more than anything else. So why would you invest within fodder or any type Type of special player beforehand when there is a market crash and it comes down to anticipation from the rest of the community there's so many people out there that understand that this is a major event coming which happens every single year and they tell you to load up on loads of different high rated players especially right now when it's cheap this leads to loads of people buying up loads of type of fodder, loads of type of special cards. And that's what actually leads to the market increasing. So when I buy fodder or any type of special cards during this time, I'm not actually saving them for the release of Team of the Year. I sell them before Team of the Year is released. I've already bought into my 83s, 84s and some of the high rated fodder with there being quite a few different Team of the Week players already within the club. Not as many as what I wanted because I did go and sell them all back in November to get that 3 million coin team which is probably now worth 2 million. I also then started to build up again but I sold them all when the Vinicius 87 rated player of the month also got released within to SBCs. I sold all of those special cards, all of those team of the week players so I had enough coins to go and get him. But after all of that I was still able to go and get loads of these players for cheap, store them into my club and just hold them. I bought them way before anyone else and by the time it gets to other people going around to buy them in preparation that's when I'll go and sell them. Where I sell them before anyone else. Normally what happens, people try to prepare, they stock up on loads of these different types of cards, wait until Team of the Year is released, only to realize that it's not needed, and that's when loads of people quickly go and panic, sell every single one of those players that they bought into, forces the market to go down. It's also the exact same thing that happens with Team of the Season. There's about a month, maybe a month and a half, where people gradually buy into fodder items or different types of special cards. This leads to player prices gradually increasing over time, but once Team of the Season is released and those players are not needed, there you go, there's the market falling under itself and completely collapsing. The good thing with this type of investing though is that if I am wrong, well at some point within the future it will be used. There will be SBCs that do come out even if it's not for Team of the Year, but there will be something within the future which does require you to have a rating and it will require you to have a special card of some sort. 
lots of these other free things that I'm doing this month within January just before team of the year and at the end of it there's no guarantee that I will get a team of the year player but I still will be better off than the current position that I'm currently in. If you do have any questions about anything then please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. Anyway guys I hope you guys did enjoy if you did enjoy it don't forget to leave a like and subscribe but for now I'm going to see ya.